friends listen to this. This is really important from all of us who've had big fancy titles. They mean nothing. Nothing. They don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. What really does mean something is what you sow into other people's lives. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it and holding nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley and Jay, three friends who understand the importance of having honest, loving women around you. When we need a, a little extra help, we ask Miss Joyce, and she is always there. So consider yourself one of the girls, and come on in, in here. Let's talk it out together. <laughs> and today, mm-hmm. th- this is going to be... What's the right way to explain it? This is going to be like a dissection for my heart, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be exciting. This, this is the hard Whenever you stuff. hear dissection. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in a good way. Yeah. It's like find, looking in there, finding out yeah. what's wrong, finding out how to fix it, yeah. you know, and then putting it all back together in a better way. Yeah. So, a lot to do in just a short amount of time. I know. I know. We better get busy. <laughs> we we're, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit today, and it's especially the beginning ones. <laughs> Yeah. The ones yeah. that just happen to be <laughs> yeah. the ones that um, are, are I'm just going to be honest, you won't like me by the end of this because oh. it's mm-hmm. just, these are the hard ones for me, yeah. you know? I was hoping we might skip to just the other ones and then maybe right. brush past the yeah. yeah. ones. Next, next time when we yes. do this part two, the next episode, Joyce will be here uh-huh. and it, look, we could just skip to that if you want. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> just skip that. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, these these are so good. No, these, they are. these are some of my my favorite things to dig into. So, the fruit of the spirit. If you are asking, um, we have this lovely uh, fruit on our table with some beautiful flowers sprinkled in, which I think is a great representation of yeah. what the fruit of the spirit is. It it is what God gives us when His Spirit is living in us, mm-hmm. and we have to learn how to cultivate it. So let me read this to you. It's from Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who mm-hmm. belong to Christ Jesus has have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Anytime it says crucified Ooh. the flesh, it's like, <laughs> right. ah, yeah. If we yeah. live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Yep, that's it. Yep, drops there we the go. Phone. It's stuff. It's stuff to it's dig fun. into and talk about. And I hope you all are right here with us because it, it's. I think the best gift maybe the, that God has given us is His Holy Spirit yeah. to fix all these natural tendencies in us, the flesh that we fight against. We're not yeah. doing it by yourself. When. Ever we talk about the fruit of the spirit, I always go back to I think I was like five, and you learn the fruit of the spirit song. Mm-hmm. Fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. You get it? I won't sing multi. Oh, I sing the whole thing. Patience, kindness, goodness. The fruit oh, I like of the, the spirit, little. I had a different version, but I, but it's still good. Though. <laughs> you got it. You yeah. got it. So that's really fun and happy, and it sounds like you know so great. And when you're little, it, that's important to learn it that way. But as an adult, and as we're studying this, it is hard. The and version of the song that I learned, of course, was like King James. And so oh, oh, yours is more official. Really the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. <laughs> <laughs> That's the patience goodness, one. Faith, meekness, temperance. And against such, there is no law. Like Yours is more accurate to real life. Yeah, I was like, long suffering. I don't want any of that. Very King no. James. <laughs> Very King James. I don't get that back. <laughs> like, long <laughs> suffering. <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't think I like this one. No. I like my song better. I like yours better. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> what do you say we jump right in and see what Ooh. Joyce has to say about how important this fruit is in our life? And please, Lord, help us get it. Yeah. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, which is humility, and self control. Something that I began to realize a long time ago is that all of the fruit come out of love. You see, love really is the fruit of the Spirit. And you're not really going to have any of these if you don't have this. Now, yes, there might be some that would be a little more naturally patient person. My husband is a more naturally patient person than I am. 
But the real fruit of the Holy Spirit, we're not just talking about personality traits, but the real fruit of the Holy Spirit has to come because the love of God has been put in us and because the Holy Spirit lives in us and where He is, His fruit is. But then they're also all held in place by self-control. So I kind of look at self-control and love as two bookends. And it's like, they all come out of love, but if I don't have self-control, I'm not gonna be humble. If I don't have self-control, I'm not gonna be faithful. I'm gonna give up on things when it gets hard. If I don't have self-control, I'm not gonna be good to anybody or kind to anybody or patient. I'm not gonna be peaceful because when something upsets me, I'm just gonna have a fit and lose my temper and just lose my peace. I'm not gonna have joy if I don't have self-control because as soon as something happens that I don't like, then I'm gonna be all upset. <laughs> I love Joyce because she, she'll she admit it. She gets right down there yeah, to yeah. how hard it is. And when she said that about Dave being naturally patient, like, <laughs> love you, Dave, but boo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've experienced him. Like, he, oh, truly, he is. He's he so great. Is super, yeah. super patient. He is. Yeah. But I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I love how Joyce said that everything starts with love. You yeah. know, and that's been really helping me a lot recently is just understanding that if it starts with love, yeah, and the understanding that God is love. Yeah. So it starts with him. You know, it like everything is propelled by him mm-hmm. and through him and for him. And as long as I've ha- have him, then everything else mm-hmm. will fall into place. And then exactly. I like how she said the bookends of you know, love and self-control. Because if you don't have the self-control, then you won't make the choice to choose any of these things. And, and it's easier. The flesh is weak. And yeah. It, it, yeah. it wants to choose the opposite of what these fruit are. Like, I look at them like, all these fruit are just so sweet, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm so sour. So many, <laughs> so many times I don't choose fruit. I choose sour things yeah. or candy bars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those those different things that you talk about trying to figure out what when you have those moments where you just feel the wrong words flying out of your mouth. <laughs> feel them. It's like ah, ah. <laughs> and, yeah, you're trying to pull them back and you you you, you feel the impatience yeah, and yeah. all those things that are swirling around in your chest, you know? And so what I love about this, what this does is it empowers us because it's not the fruit of a Christian, uh-huh. it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's yeah. the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. that gives us what we need to cultivate this, pr- this fruit in our life. It's yeah. not, we can do it all on our own. Yeah. It's we can do it because we have God's Spirit in us. I love that because I, it feels really overwhelming to me, just to be honest. When you list all of those, I cannot obtain that. I can barely obtain two of them, <laughs> let alone the long list of all of them. So... I that just it's it's overwhelming to me to think yeah. of how am I supposed to be that as a good Christian. Yeah. yeah. But I love what you're saying because it is the Holy Spirit. And if if I can set my mind on him, like one thing, I can focus on what is the Holy Spirit leading me to do. Mm-hmm. I don't have to accomplish all fruit of the Spirit at one time. If I can just listen to how he's leading me, yeah. He is guiding you, he is taking me through it. It's not me having to check them all off the list. Right. Yeah, and I love the fact that you're saying that it's not the fruit of Christ- of Christians, mm-hmm. but the fruit of the Spirit. Because I'm learning God in such a new and real way these mm-hmm. these this past like year and a half or so. It's so unlike anything I've ever experienced before, mm-hmm. you know. And it feels more authentic, more real mm-hmm. than it ever has before. But it's so very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. For sure. because I used to choose because I was the self righteous. Martha, <laughs> that wanted to choose all of the right things, pick the right fruit, love, joy, peace, yeah. be perfect as possible, mm-hmm. you know. But here lately, I'm flawed because I'm uh, like, I've been so hurt mm-hmm. and I'm healing. And in the process of healing, you just hit bumps a- a- along the road. Mm-hmm. And I just have experienced so many Christians um, in a not so great way, yeah. if I'm just honest. Sure. Like, because people don't understand because I'm not exactly as perfect as I've always tried to be in the past. And I've, I've been, mm. I've shown my scars publicly on, you know, on Talk It Out and just in my life in general, if you follow me anywhere, like I'm just flawed and I'm, I'm accepting that because that's me not trying to be perfect, but allowing God to be perfect in me. Right. Um, but just the way that Christians have been assuming things mm-hmm. a lot because of 
the flaws that I'm sharing, I get so many scriptures or like almost insinuations and implications of like me being a sinner. <laughs> like it's been so crazy. Oh, really? Yes. It's this, it's really it's, like, here, let me help you with this. Yeah. Uh, like not ask me, how are you, Jay? It's just very almost judgmental. And what I was even having a conversation with my mom and I'm like, mom, like we were talking about like, you know, fruit of the spirit and everything, but it's like, if this is how I ever was to my unsaved mm. family members or friends, mm -hmm. and I thought I was choosing all the right, I thought that was love. I thought like, I want you to know Jesus. I want you to da da da. Without really like getting to know the person or asking them questions or just being their friend, like honestly, like Jesus did. Yeah. You know, like I was like, I don't want to be that ever mm -hmm. again. I don't ever want to be a Christian that is judgmental. Mm -hmm. And it's, but like, honestly, it was, ignorant. I don't see your joy. Yeah. You know, right. I don't see your patience. Yeah. Well, I need to work on my own. I need to work instead on Instead of mm -hmm. watching for the flaws in somebody mm -hmm. else's. Exa but it's very, but how I felt in this, because it is unusual for me. It's, this has been the most unique season of my life, which I feel like is about to catapult me to something very, very great. I feel it, but it's very uncomfortable sure. still. Yeah. And I'm still choosing the fruit, but it's Catapults just, are uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. They're all tiny, <laughs> squishy, and you know, they squeeze really hard. And then they just let go. Yeah. <laughs> and the let go is very exactly, uncomfortable. Right. You know? And so, but I'm just, it's just been a, an interesting season where I've seen a lot of Christians, but, and I really believe the intentions are good. Yeah. yeah. And I believe that Christians are trying to be um, sh showing the fruit of the spirit. But the way that we've been going about it, that they not believe that they've been going about it with me has felt very judgmental. It's mm -hmm. very, and I was like, God, I don't, I don't want to ever return to that. If that was ever me, because I could see some of the things that I used to do. Sure. Where I'm like, this is love. This is me choosing joy. This is yeah. me also offering ways of them, of this person to be more, you know. Right. I don't Let know. Let me tell you how to have the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Let me show you. It's just very, mm -hmm. un like, I don't know. It's just interesting. I think it's I think so too. great that God chose in the Bible to talk about these, these characteristics of, yeah. of a godly person in terms of, Fruit that has to be nurtured and cultivated and cared for. Mm -hmm. I mean, fruit is is really delicate. You, mm -hmm. you know, you throw it down, it's going to get bruised and nasty. Oh, and yeah. so, with with the fruit of the spirit, we have to learn how to be tender with our heart yeah. and how to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit and cultivate, grow, nurture mm -hmm. all of these things in, in our life. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to look at it. It doesn't just happen because we we throw that seed in the ground of, I'm a Christian, yeah. bring it on, God. Yeah, you know? like they just naturally pop up. But right. it's like, there are seasons of even, like you think of like even an avocado, which is technically a fruit still. You know, it's, 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 it's true. there's a very big it's seed in there. Yeah, like it's a fruit. It's we're it's, with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, but you. I mean, if you could have chosen a banana, but I just chose the avocado because I feel more like an avocado these days. <laughs> okay. You know, like high in fat and <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, but good fat. You know, good. Yeah, that would be But like, you can't eat an avocado until it's ripe, until yeah. it's ready, because yeah. if it's too hard and not pliable yet, then it's not good. It's not, it's bitter. And yeah. so I'm just like, there are, there are processes to this. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. they're also like when you talk about cultivating, they're just seasons of growth that you yeah. have to go through so you can be ripe for whatever the next season is for yeah. you, mm -hmm. you know? Well, so. let's, let's get into the hard stuff Ew. because Joy says there is one fruit that is the most difficult to develop. Mm -hmm. I, we all know what she's talking about. I know. About. I don't want to go there, but oh, let's do it. Let's listen. See what she says. <laughs> So while God is working on one of these things, there's others that are connected to it. <laughs> We're not going to have any peace if we don't have self-control. We're not going to have any patience if we don't have self-control. And patience, as we know, is probably one of the most challenging things, especially for certain personality types like mine. Because I'm a quick person. Make quick decisions, want people to move quick, quick, quick. Quick, want God to be quick? <laughs> well, God's not late, but he's rarely ever early. <laughs> and he's certainly not in a hurry about much of anything. 
James 1, consider it wholly joyful, <laughs> like hilariously joyful, whenever you're enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. That doesn't necessarily mean consider it joyful because it feels good, but consider it joyful because of what you're going to get out of it if you learn how to go through it properly. When you're in hard times and you remain stable, you grow. You grow, and growing hurts. But once you've grown, then you have new levels of all of this. Then you have something the devil cannot take away from you. That's why we have to stop praying for every uncomfortable thing in our life to go away. And we have to say, God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe that all things work out for good. And if this is in my life, then I want you to use it and let me get something out of it. Make me a better person because of what I've got going on. I challenge you to try to find one place in the Bible where the Apostle Paul prayed for any Christian for their problems to go away. You can't find it. It's not there. What he prayed for was for them to endure whatever came with good temper. God doesn't deliver us quickly. He does it little by little. Little by little. There's two ways that God works. Slowly and suddenly. And first he works slowly, and then when you think he's never going to do anything, then suddenly you have a breakthrough. It is so true. <laughs> I love is. that. Slowly and suddenly. Mm -hmm. And for a person who is not naturally patient, mm -hmm. such as myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> for example, <laughs> for example, let's say me, <laughs> it's hard. The slowly yeah, oh, yeah. part is hard. And I, I love what Joy said, you know, just just being a quick person, you know, patience is not one of my favorite things to try to work on. Let's talk about joy. You know, I, I'm all over joy. Yeah. Let's do joy. Yeah, that's a good but, one. <laughs> but no, God's saying, no, work on this. And for, for patience, what I find is that it's so much more about other people than it is about me. Mm -hmm. I feel like things need to move more quickly. I don't realize how that is impacting everybody else around me. Mm -hmm. when, when you're impatient, you're just thinking about yourself and what's happening, and it, it spills over. There's no way to be impatient without it spilling over into everybody around you, and I don't want that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Patience is also one where I think... It it feels like it's one of the ones that we have to like tackle a lot. Yeah, we're never gonna get that one all the way. Yeah, and to me, it's one of the ones that if you if you can t go to God and, and you can like learn what He's trying to teach you, it's one of the ones that brings you the closest to Him, because mm. you have to surrender everything that you want because. You cannot make it go faster. I cannot get my answer faster. I cannot make this thing happen any faster than when he's going to let it happen or not happen. So yeah, that's really true. You're constantly having to to surrender to him, and that is exhausting. But to me, it's one of the ones that brings yeah. you closest to him. I love that you said that because I've really never thought about it that way. That surrender. I think I'm pretty good at you know mm -hmm. surrendering my life, surrendering. Anything he wants me to do, mm -hmm. surrendering in so many inconvenient ways, I'm all about that. But when it comes down to surrendering this moment mm -hmm. that I'm feeling annoyed and impatient, mm -hmm. I haven't thought about it that way. So surrendering to God is not just the big overall arching no, no. Yeah. umbrella of life. It's the little impatient moments one after the next. The bigger ones seem easier to surrender yeah, and exactly. to have patience for. It's the little ones that are... Rough. Yeah. It's yeah. all of them for me. It's all, 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 <laughs> all, all of them. <laughs> Little, big, middle, all of them. Because patience requires trust. Yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah. It requires trust and it requires faith. Like it requires a strong amount of faith that I trust that God is going mm -hmm. to bring me out of this or I trust that God is going to um, get the glory no matter what. Like mm -hmm. I think of the three Hebrew boys and how they were basically saying like, even if God doesn't deliver yeah. us out of the fire, I know that He can. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a certain level of trust and faith. It's like it's a big level. It, you know, it's like 
if I if if I don't make it out of this or mm-hmm. if it doesn't get better, I know that God still can. Mm-hmm. That's a certain level of trust that mm-hmm. you have to have in God to have. Pa- and so like that's what I'm learning even more and more, like the patience. It's the King James long suffering. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It's being able to suffer long and know that God is with me through the suffering. Yeah. This new yeah. season is requiring me to just kind of sit still. And it's kind of, it's it's slowing me down because I really don't. Sure. There's no quick remedy to this. Now with patience having her perfect work in me, I really don't want to repeat this season. Yeah. I don't want to repeat mm-hmm. any of this. I'm actually slowing down. Yep. Yeah. This is the first time like I feel so slow. Like I feel <laughs> I feel very <laughs> slow. slow. Like and sometimes it feels like life's passing me by, but I'm like mm-hmm. I'd rather move slowly in life right now yep. yeah. while I'm healing and while I'm allowing the patience to do what patience is going to do mm-hmm. and make the right steps than to make a hasty step that'll be a, somewhat of a quick fix. So I'm actually trying to exercise more patience now than I've ever yeah, done before. That's a great job. It's extremely yeah. uncomfortable though. Sure. Yeah, it's hard. And it feels like I'm like slow with everything. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it doesn't feel, it doesn't, it, but I guess that's patience, right? Right. Yeah. Long suffering. Th- there are two things that, that I've learned to do that have really helped me and I need so much help. Um, <laughs> what two things that I've learned to say in in those times. One is it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I've, I've had to learn to say that okay. because I think things are so important and they need to move and it needs to be like I think it needs to be. And I, I've learned to say it doesn't matter. And it comes to that faith that you're talking mm-hmm. about because what I think is so important is not as important, does not matter compared to what God has in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So it's trusting Him that He has a far better plan anyway. So if I can say it doesn't matter, um, then then it does kind of change my outlook. Yeah. And the, the second part is it's not about me anyway. Mm-hmm. If I can say that That's in good. my most impatient moment, and boy, it is not always easy. But if I can remember those phrases, it's not about me anyway. You know, mm-hmm. it, it may be about what somebody else needs. It may be about what God's doing. It's probably about what God's trying to teach me through this. But this moment is not about me and what I want. And That's so those really have helped. Helpful. I, I was just thinking about this last night, feeling like you said impatient with the people. Yeah. People are cause me to be annoyed. People <laughs> people are problems. They're yes. Really are a problem. It would be so much easier if people weren't involved. <laughs> but I love what you said those things are really helpful because when people are your problem, to step back and realize it's not about you. And and I had to find myself to flip it even yesterday and pray for that person. Yeah. Because I don't want to start to resent somebody for something they don't even know that they're making me annoyed for or whatever it is, but it's not about me. So maybe I should pray for them and maybe God can use my prayers or, or he'll at least change me and help me to flip my perspective on them. Oh, okay. Well, is it time for another one? You know what? And this one's no easier. In fact, this one maybe for me is even harder. So let's, let's just keep going up next. (laughs) Gentleness. Joyce is going to talk about gentleness and especially connecting it to humility. So I love talking about this because I've learned that humility was not what I thought it was. Mm. So take a listen. Humility is really what sets you free. A humble person is really a happy person because they're not trying to impress anybody. They don't live under pressure. They're not hypocritical. They're not pretending. They're not in competition with everybody else. They're free to be holy and completely who they are with no pressure of feeling that they need to be something else because they're satisfied with what God has made. They simply want to be the best version of them that they can be. You see, a truly humble person, it wouldn't matter to them if they were the greatest singer in the earth or the person who cleaned the toilets at the church. Because they have understanding that their worth and value is not in what they do. It's in being obedient to what God is asking them to do. And sometimes if God is asking us to do something that perhaps by the world is not, is maybe seen as more of a lowly job, then it does require humility and meekness to be willing to do that job and do it with joy. But every job has to be covered. 
God's got everything covered. He anoints all of us in different ways. And God doesn't see things like the world sees them. He doesn't look at one position as high and exalted and another one as lowly. God's got an overall plan that involves all of us and we all fit in somewhere. And we need to be happy to fit in in the place where God wants us. People ask frequently about Dave and how he handles me having this position and him sitting in all these meetings, not being the one that's up in front of the people all the time. And although Dave has a tremendous part in the ministry, it is more behind the scenes rather than the one that is actually the voice of the ministry. And I'm not going to say that Dave didn't have any issues with it, but he got them settled in about three weeks. <laughs> because here's what God put on his heart. I've put a gift in your wife and I want you to support that gift. And if you will do what I'm giving you the grace to do, then you'll always have joy. But if you try to go beyond that and do something that I'm not giving you to do, then you're not going to have joy. And I can't tell you how many unhappy people there are in the world because they're simply not satisfied being who they are. Well, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. There's no such thing as a just a stay-at-home mom. Being a mother is a high calling. Being a good mom is a high calling. You don't know, you might be raising the next greatest evangelist that the world will ever see. And then again, maybe you're raising somebody that's going to be a quiet lover of people. Well, I'm just this. I'm just that. And you know, as people, we have a tendency to be really impressed by what people do. But God is not impressed with what we do. He's impressed with our motives and our heart attitude about why we do it. And if our motives aren't right, then nothing is acceptable to God. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. Rest. I will cause you to rest. How many of you need that rest in your soul? He's not talking about taking a nap. He's talking about rest internal rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. And that's where we need rest, in our mind, in our will, in our emotions. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm humble, gentle, for I'm gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation. <laughs> See what all humility gives you? <laughs> Let's back it back up again. You will find rest, relief, ease, refreshment, recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it's going to be worth it to learn about humility. And then in verse 30, he says, for my yoke is wholesome, useful, good. I am not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing. I tell you, Jesus is just plain comfortable to hang around. But I'm comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light. The most amazing quality that Jesus walked in in his life as an example to us is this beautiful quality of humility gentleness and meekness. We have a totally wrong view of humility and meekness. Meekness is a word that we just don't understand. We think meekness is weakness, it's wimpiness, it's letting people walk all over you. But actually the definition of the word meek means strength under control. Jesus did not have to go to the cross. He said, don't you know that I could call for a legion of angels and they would deliver me? But he humbled himself under the mighty hand of God because he knew that was what God wanted him to do and what was going to be best for everybody else. I love mm. that thought that Jesus is just comfortable to be with. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It is. I, I want to be comfortable for people people to be with. What what a wonderful thing to say about someone. Yeah, that just reminds me of how I started this conversation. Like, 
a lot of people that I've been friends with for a long time that are believers that have great intentions have made it somewhat uncomfortable for me while mm-hmm. I'm figuring this new season out. Like it, it's uncomfortable for me to be around them, you know? And, yeah. and, and this is in this humbling season that God's putting me in, like he's allowing me to go through right now. It's softened me in so many different ways where so many unbelievers, because I've softened up because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling mm-hmm. more than I've ever felt before. And I'm experiencing life in a different way and allowing the process to actually be what it's going to, you know, that whole patience piece. I'm, I'm as much as I can allowing myself to become as pliable and like the avocado soft and ripe as possible. I just have had so many people that don't know God and don't know Jesus come to me so much more now mm. than ever before when I was kind of abrasive and kind of like, Jesus, 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 you know, yeah. when I had to like, just in my time, I'm like, Jesus didn't do that. No. Like Jesus yeah. knew that he was King of King and Lord of Lords. He mm. knew who he was. He left his throne and came to earth for a specific reason, a specific task. But he was just so loving and so comfortable to be around yeah. that tax collectors, prostitutes, anyone like who didn't live the same kind of life he lived, loved being around him. And mm-hmm. I, I'm like, wow, this season of me really going through so much pain, but allowing that pain to like push me into purpose to be just more humble. And like I said, I, I, I never thought humility felt like was this, mm-hmm. but it's just um, more relatable and more mm-hmm. human to exactly. people, which has been beautiful. Yeah. That's one of the most beautiful things out of this season, out of this time mm-hmm. That I've been able to experience is just like, you know, being able to connect with people, yeah, and then a- being able to actually see the fruit inside. Like the Bible talks about, you'll know them by the fruit that they bear. And it's not because I'm pushing it on them; it's because when they're comfortable right. around me, they feel love, they you, feel joy. You don't have to tell them you, you're full of the fruit exactly. of the spirit. Pride and humility are one of the, these things that I've just studied, studied, studied all of my life because I just I believe it's so important and there's so much that that I need to work on constantly and I've I've learned that that idea of of pride it's not always a conceit like I'm better than everybody mm-hmm. else that that's what we think of and mm-hmm. that's what we see as obvious pride but in in my life at least and I think in, in a lot of our lives there's all this hidden pride these mm-hmm. little agendas mm-hmm that we don't realize. And it's not because we think we're better than somebody else, but it's because we want to be seen or yeah. we want to be known. Yeah. I want I want you to know what I know. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. I want you to know that this was my idea mm-hmm. or yeah. I already knew that you didn't have to tell me. All those little things, they're all about pride. Yeah. And pride is such a foundation for other problems that build up. We, we were talking about love being the foundation of the fruit of the Spirit and that self-control being the bookend. Pride is the foundation that we start building all of the other just stones of corruption in yeah. our life on. And so when we make ourselves more important, when we get puffed up, I, I always mm. think of like a a spiky puffer fish. You know how they're <laughs> tiny and then they go poof. Yep. <laughs> and That's they're pr- real big and spiky <laughs> yep. and no one can get close to them. Yeah. There's no room for anybody else in, around them. There's no room for anything else in their life because they're all yeah. puffed up with self. Yeah. And so we just need to deflate that ugly puffer fish. I've learned that a lot from you as a leader. You've been my leader for a long time. Um, you do a really good job of not taking the credit and you're always really quick to give your team the credit for whatever idea it was that was come up with or whatever project we've been working on. You do a, such a good job of deflecting. So it's not about you. It's about the team as a whole. And I've watched you do it time and time again. And I, I want to be like that because it, it makes the team feel valued mm-hmm. and it makes people respond and want to, to do more and even work even harder because they feel seen too where you could take all the credit because you're really smart and you have really <laughs> kind brilliant of a smart ideas lady <laughs> but but it's so it's so fun to watch how because you do that it empowers a whole group of people to want to work even harder 
Yeah. And do the same. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So now I want to do that because I saw you do it and I saw how people responded. It makes me want to do it. Humility is contagious. Yeah. But so is pride. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Because you're pride right. is addicting. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and then you see it in it the church. You see it in the church. I want a little bit more yeah, of that you see accolade. It in the, and, and yeah. because you're I'm a pastor's yeah. kid, yeah. right? Like, I'm a pastor's kid and I grew up in the church and I've looked up to all these different people that held these positions. And that's also in the professional world as well. And, and you want to, you know, you get praised for, you know, excelling in life. You mm-hmm. get praised for that, sure. you know? Um, and that's why I'm trying to also balance it with my daughter wanting to take like a gap year to focus on God. It's like, I want to praise her for that too, because we're, we live in a culture mm-hmm. that only praises when you go straight to college or when you go straight to do this, you know? Right. And so and when I you just, achieve. Yeah. When you mm-hmm. achieve. And I mean, and that's not a bad thing, sure. but it's also, it's really not what Jesus did. Jesus didn't go for titles. He didn't go for, right. and I'm not saying everybody just go be lazy, but that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm saying like, we have to check that. And that's one reason when I, when I knew that God was about to, I was about to go through this really tough, tough time. I literally, like I was the, my official title was the global worship pastor, which meant that I. That sounds big. It it was official, you know, (laughs) it was official. official. Big deal. It wasn't just a worship pastor. It wasn't just a worship leader, honey. I was like, global. Global. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I was, I mean, it it was, but with that did come a lot of responsibility because we have like six, no, seven campuses that I oversaw all things worship, all Mm -hmm. things. And I actually pastored the team of over 200 people, you know? So like that was a huge responsibility, but I knew that this bowl of fruit <laughs> was about to be smushed, mm, you know, and yeah. I was going to need time to nurture my own fruit. Um, that I was, this is the first time I've ever been like, I'm just going to let go of the title. Like, mm, yeah, I can't allow pride to rule me right now. Yeah, <laughs> you're so right. I need, I, I need to actually... I need to work on me and I need to heal properly so that when I come out of this, I'm better than what I am right now. Mm -hmm, And so I quit almost everything, y'all. I was, I'm like, it's just, it's, I've been at the lowest of lows during this time intentionally, Mm -hmm. you know, because I'm like, God, I need you to strip me of everything so that when I come out of this, I'll be better. So Otherwise, we have to do it again. Yeah, I just I don't want to repeat yeah. it. No, I don't want to repeat anything, even yeah. if it's not the exact same scenario. I don't want to repeat this pain. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. just I, I want to grow from this, and I wanted to to prune me to be better. I want more love. I want more joy. Yeah. I want more peace. You sure. know, and I do want more patience. Like I do want to slow down. Yeah, it, it, friends, listen to this. This is really important from all of us who've had big fancy titles, they mean nothing. Nothing. They don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. What really does mean something is what you sow into other people's lives. I remember, it's actually happened a few times and I've, when I've dealt with some anxiety and I've, I've been crying and overwhelmed and I've, God has shown me, see, you are no better than anybody. Mm. And just as I can sit here with you all and get, I have an amazing job and I'm so honored to get to do what I do, but I'm also crying on the bathroom floor because I'm a mess. Yeah. Yeah. And aren't we all? Yeah. Yeah. And I, God showed me that. He said, you have got to keep your eyes on me. And yeah. almost like he, not that he's given me anxiety, but in those seasons where I've dealt with some of that, he, he'll he use those things to keep me humble before him to remind me, mm. I am mm. your everything. It doesn't matter what your job is or how great of a mom you are or how many Pinterest projects you make for your kids' bedrooms. None of that matters <laughs> yeah. if you're if I'm not your anchor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. there's a couple of verses in James. James, I, I just love James. But anyway, James chapter four, um, verse six says, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Well, mm-hmm. I want God's favor. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want I don't want to be opposed. Then it goes on in in uh, verse 10 to say, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Mm-hmm. When God lifts us up, it's yeah. not even something that we feel because it's different than the world lifting us up. And when, if we don't humble ourselves, God will humble us. So he's either going to lift us up in his way or he's going to humble us if we need knocked down. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I've been in both places mm-hmm. and I don't want to be knocked down by God again. So, you know, keeping, keeping everything I have to, to keep studying on the fruit of gentleness and humility, uh, just yeah, really, really important. Well, we're, we're going to, um, 
touch on one more fruit of the Spirit. And then, like I said, next time, our next episode, we'll be talking about more with Joyce. So it's, that'll, that'll be awesome. Mm-hmm. That'll be so good. But peace is so important. It's what everybody wants. And it's there for us as the fruit of the Spirit. So let's see what Joyce has to say about the fruit of peace. My peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now Jesus is saying, I've given you peace, now here's your part. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Well, George, I just can't help it. I just get upset before I realize what's going on, and I just can't help it. I just act bad, and then I feel guilty, and I wish I didn't, but I just can't help it. Well, nothing is ever going to change in our lives until we stop saying, I can't help it. Here's why. God is never going to tell us to do anything unless He makes us able to do it. God would not say walk in love if we weren't capable of walking in love. He wouldn't say walk in peace if we weren't capable of walking in peace. So before we can have any victory, we have to start out by saying, whatever God tells me to do, through His help, I can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, including be peaceful in any kind of a circumstance. Amen? I got so tired of being upset and not having any peace and watching Dave enjoy his life while mine was in turmoil (laughs) all the time. I would worry about a problem for a month. He wouldn't worry about it at all. We'd finally get a breakthrough. Well, he enjoyed his month and I had a month of misery. (laughs) Amen? Amen? And finally, I decided Everybody say, I decided. decided. Finally, I decided that I was going to work with the Holy Spirit, and I was going to learn how to walk in peace if it was the last thing that I ever did. And I started by praying and studying peace in the Bible. And then after that, I began to ask God to show me and teach me how the devil stole my peace. Sometimes you gotta kinda back into your victory. You gotta get back over here and see what the root of your problem is. Peace is one of those things that we all chase after. Mm -hmm. And it's kinda funny, it it, it really makes no sense chasing after peace. How how peaceful is that when you're like, I gotta get peace, I gotta get peace. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's like, no, No, I'm getting the peace. I'm stressing myself out trying to get (laughs) peace. Right. So I do love that the Holy Spirit in our lives is what is what provides that peace. And it it, like Joyce was saying, seeing it in Dave, it's when we see it in somebody else, we mm-hmm. recognize mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. and it, it kind of changes the way we go after it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the beginning, when we were talking about how they all kind of connect together, I think peace goes so well with what we just talked about with humility, because you can't have peace if you're so busy trying to chase things. You're right. Yeah. To achieve things because it feels good for your ego, that won't get you any peace. Peace comes from doing whatever God is calling you to do or going where he calls you to do and not chasing things that you think you need. Yeah. Yeah. And (laughs) the the funny thing is, and I know I I, I talk about my situation a lot because honestly, y'all, it's where you are, It's where I am, okay? (laughs) And so chasing after peace, initially when I first found out about everything, I really just wanted answers and I wanted resolve because that's the kind of person I am. Like I I don't like unresolved music, you know, I'm like, uh... Mm, you know, I like <laughs> finish it. Let's finish you know? that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I don't like I, I don't like things just hanging around. I like mm-hmm. to finish things. And so I was seeking after answers. I was seeking, and I'm a justice person, so I was seeking after justice and yeah. like, what's happening? What are we gonna do? Da da da. And then finally, after so long, one of my friends that had gone through something very very similar, she said, Jay, if you want peace, you're gonna have to get an I don't care spirit. <laughs> like as far mm. as like oh. with all of the things that are going on, yeah. Yeah. you have to say. I trust you, God. I don't care. Yeah. 
Like that part of, and I'm like, but I do. I can. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know, you know, a lot. But she's like, do you want peace? Mm. I do. Yeah. And I honestly want that more than I want more answers because the more answers I was getting, the more pain it caused me. Yeah. And mm. I, I was up at night. I was scrolling. That's I was so true. Those things we think we need, those mm-hmm. answers. Whatever we we get more of that in our life, and our life just gets more crowded and more, more hurt. Yeah, and it's it was so true. It was difficult. My heart would start palpitating. Yeah. Like the more I would find things out, the more I'd see pictures or see things, and I'm like, ugh, ugh, ugh. it didn't help. Yeah. Sometimes the things that we don't know lead us to peace. When we think, if I had answers, I'd have closure. Peace is better than closure. Yeah, God's peace is is a different type of closure that means so much. Yeah, it's different. It doesn't mean that you like evade real issues. No. Like if you feel a sickness and you're just like, I'd rather have peace than go to the doctor. No. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Get <laughs> answers, like get the answers you need, but then give it to God. That part yeah. is so pivotal is once you find out what's going on, do what you got to do, but like trust that God's going to handle the rest and just like- right. But yeah. you can have peace in the middle of while peace you're finding in out the, the storm. answers or yeah, while peace. you're going through a difficult time and you're Ex- whatever. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, I always kind of think about the fruit of the spirit like like an Italian dressing bottle where God's spirit is when we accept Jesus into our lives, we have his spirit. And as as we grow closer to him, then then all those things that he gives us, they're all in that bottle, but they tend to settle down to the bottom because life gets heavy mm-hmm. and we get hurt and we get busy with other things. So what we need to do is shake that bottle up, shake up that love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the gentleness, the self-control. Shake it up. It's there. It's it's maybe dormant laying at the bottom, somewhere in your toes. And so we we just need to keep on cultivating cultivating it. And we're, we're going to do more of this next episode with Joyce, like we said. That was only three of the fruit, believe it or not. <laughs> Man, so so much fruit. We've got more so to much. talk about. <laughs> we've got some guacamole to make, girls. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to bring some next time. <laughs> yeah, we should, we'll have, we'll have guacamole and chips on the table next time. So we hope that you'll be here with us then. In the meantime, we have an offer for you. It's called Understanding Gifts Versus Fruit. This is a an audible teaching from Joyce, um, an audio download that you can get. Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And you can get that free download. You can sign up for our friends list. You can catch up on back episodes. Please subscribe. Give us some nice reviews. Tell your friends about us. We want to make this this Talk It Out group as large as we possibly can because we need each other. We do. And um, this is really important. It is almost time for WC. Yay! Can you believe it's almost here? <laughs> October 8th and 9th, it's our virtual women's conference, the Love Life Women's Conference. Going to be so fun next Friday. So it is soon. not too late to sign up. So go to joycemeyer.org slash lovelife21. We're going to be doing a talk it out, talking about it's okay not to be okay with I love it. Joyce and Dr. Okay. Henry Cloud. Love him. Oh, it's it's going to be great. And yeah. we have so many wonderful guests. Of course, Joyce will be teaching and uh, it's just going to be a great experience. So make sure that you register right now and we will see you back here next time. Love you. Bye. Go get today's free resource at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And while you're at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can also review previous episodes, get to know us a little better, and sign up for our friends list to receive exclusive content. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast.